everyone, welcome to Keep Calm and Crochet. Today I'm going to show you how to crochet this cute jellyfish. This is the mummy jellyfish. If you would like a video tutorial for the baby jellyfish, then follow the link in the description box below for these little baby cuties. For this tutorial, you're going to need standard double knit yarn in blue, pink and purple and some black for eyes and the embroidery of the mouth. I'm going to be working this project with a 4.5mm crochet hook. In addition to this, you're also going to need a pair of scissors, darning needle, stitch marker and some fibre fill. Now, if you enjoy watching my videos and creating these gorgeous little lovely projects, then please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's get started. We're going to start off with the head and for this, I'm going to be working with two strands of yarn in one go. You're going to be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now I've chosen to go for two strands at the same time because this will give a very special effect to your um, jellyfish. So let's start off by working a slip knot. Now we're going to slip our hook inside and chain two. One, Two. If you wish to work with a magic ring, then that's totally fine. You skip this step and make a magic ring and start your round one in your magic ring. But for this method, you're going to skip the first chain and slip your hook in the second chain from your hook. Pull up a loop from there. Because we were using two strands of yarn, you're going to have two loops ready, but we are going to be calling that one. So we're going to consider both strands of yarn as one. Yarn over, pull through both like this. That's my first single crochet. Going back into that same stitch and we're going to work another single crochet. So that's my second single crochet. We're going to work six of them all together. Here's third, fourth, fifth and my sixth one. Now once you have your six single crochets, you're going to pull on this bit of yarn to eliminate the gap between your stitches and this should um, bring all your stitches nice and close together. So from here I'm going to start working my stitches on top of these stitches. So locate your first single crochet of your previous round and we're going to slip our hook inside there like this. Now here I'm going to be working my first single crochet of this round for round two then I'm going back into that same stitch to work another single crochet so when you work two single crochets in the same stitch it's called an increase so that's one increase I'm going to be working six increases all together here's my second increase third increase fourth increase fifth increase and increase number six and we're going to now start working on the next round straight away and we're going to start by working a single crochet in the next stitch and from here I'm going to start using a stitch marker to identify the start of each of my rounds now if you don't have a stitch marker you can always thread a little uh, bit of yarn through it or use hairpin or even paper clip. Now follow the single crochet on with an increase. So two single crochets in that same stitch. And here's your repeat for this round. One single crochet followed on with an increase and repeat that all the way around till you get to this point here. So go ahead and work this round and then meet me back here. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 18. We're now going to start the next round. And in here, we're going to work a single crochet first. Let's put our stitch marker back in place. And we're going to follow this single crochet on with an increase. So two single crochets in that same stitch. And in the next stitch here, we're going to work another single crochet. And here you go. Here's your combination for this round. Single crochet followed on with an increase and then another single crochet. Single crochet, increase, single crochet. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 24. 
We're now going to start the next round with three single crochets in a row. Two, three, followed on with an increase. And here's your repeat toward this round. Three single crochets followed on with an increase and repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 30. Now going to start the next round with two single crochets. Here's my first. Second, followed on with an increase. And then two more single crochets. And here's your repeat for this round. Two single crochets followed on with an increase, two single crochets. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 36. We're now going to start the next round with five single crochets in a row. Here's my first. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Follow that on with an increase. And here's your combination for this round. Five single crochets followed on with an increase. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 42. We're now going to start the next round with three single crochets in a row. Here's my first, second, and third. Follow this on with an increase and three more single crochets in a row. Here's your combination for this round. Three single crochets, increase, three single crochets, and repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 48. Now we're going to pause working on the head for a minute, and we're going to follow all of these instructions one more time to make another one of these. Once we've done that, we're going to continue working with this one to make the head. And the second one that we have created will be the base of the jellyfish. So we'll turn it upside down and connect the two later on. So go ahead, follow the same instructions and make another one of these and meet me back here. I'll put the written instructions up on the screen now. We're now going to finish off with the base of this head by working a slip stitch in the next stitch. And we can now go ahead and snip this yarn off. Pull it out of the stitch and pull this down. And there we go, this completes the base of the head. Now we're going to continue working on this head. And for this, we're going to start off by working seven single crochets in a row. And we're going to follow that on with an increase. So there's your repeat, seven single crochet followed on with an increase and repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 54. We're now going to start the next round with four single crochets in a row that's my first second third fourth followed on with an increase and follow this on with four more single crochets in a row that's one two, three, and four. And here's your repeat for this round. Four single crochets, increase four single crochets. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 60. Now we're going to start the next round with a single crochet in our first stitch. going to follow the single crochet on with a single crochet in every one of these stitches all the way around. 
To finish one round, you're going to need 60 single crochets in a row. Once you finish one round, you're going to follow the same method eight times to have eight rounds of just single crochet. So go ahead, work eight rounds of single crochet and then meet me back here. At the end of eight rounds of single crochet, your stitch count should still be 60. We're now going to start the next round with eight single crochets in a row. Here's my first, second stitch marker back in place. There's third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and final, number eight. Once you have your eight single crochets in a row, we're going to follow this on with a decrease. To work a decrease, you're going to slip your hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop. Do the same with the stitch after that. Pull up a loop, so you will have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops in one go. And that works a decrease. So this is your combination for this round. Eight single crochets followed on with a decrease and repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 54. We're now going to start the next round with a single crochet in our first stitch. Stitch marker back in place. And we're going to follow this single crochet on with a single crochet in every one of these stitches all the way around. To finish one round, you're going to need 54 single crochets in a row. Once you've done that, you're going to follow the same method four times to have four rounds of just single crochet. So go ahead. Finish four rounds of single crochet all together and meet me back here. At the end of four rounds of single crochet, your stitch count should still be 54. Now going to start the next round with seven single crochets in a row. Here's my first. Second. Third. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. We're going to follow the seventh single crochet on with a decrease. So pull up a loop from the next two stitches, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three in one go. And here's your combination for this round seven single crochets. Followed on with a decrease and repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, your stitch count should be 48. Now we're going to be attaching this head with the base of the head. So let's grab the base of the head, which is this. So we're going to be having that the wrong way around and hold it next to your, next to the head like this. So we're going to be attaching this across this side with single crochets all the way around. And the reason why we're doing this is because if we turn it upside down, you will see the right side up. So, again, hold the base of the head wrong way around and pull it next to your stitches. Literally do that anywhere. It doesn't matter where you attach the stitches. So, from here, you're going to be slipping your hook in the next stitch. Do the same with the one of the stitches. On the base of the head, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through both to work your first single crochet. And just like this, we're going to work all the way around. So slip your hook in the next stitch, go from the back in the stitch after that. So if I pull my stitches apart, you will see that I've gone through the front and the back of the stitches. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. Oh, and let's go back into it. And just like this, you're going to work all the way around the whole thing, leaving around two inch gap. Now we're leaving that gap so we can fill this head up with fiber fill afterwards once we've got two inch gap. So go ahead and work a single crochet round attaching these two things. Leave one inch gap, fill this head up with fiber fill and meet me back here. I've now made my way all the way around working single crochet and I've got a about inch and a half of a gap and I've already filled in the head with fiber fill. Let's go ahead and work last few stitches together. So slip your hook 
in the next stitch and guide it to come out from the stitch at the back and work your single crochet and continue working that all the way around and here's my last stitch put a loop and let's work our last single crochet on here from here you're going to work one whole round of increases which means in every single stitch all the way around you're going to work two single crochets starting with the first one slip your hook inside work our first single crochet let's go ahead and put our stitch marker back in place now from here you're going to work increase in every single one of these stitches all the way around and meet me back here at the end of this round of increases your stitch count should be 96 and this is what it should be looking like at the moment we're going to make this little ripple a little bit more pronounced and to do this you're going to be working and increase in every one of these stitches one more time so go ahead and work whole round of increases and meet me back here at the end of this round of increases your total stitch count should be 192 we're now going to fasten off by working a slip stitch in the next stitch slip your hook inside pull up a loop make it go through the loop that was already on your hook now let's go ahead and snip this yarn off and later we will use a darning needle to work our ends in and there we go now this completes the head now onto the tentacles we're going to be making these in two different sizes so this is one size and this is the other size so i've chosen to go for three colors and we're going to be making two of each in each color so i'm going to be making one in purple one in blue and one in pink color and we're going to be making two of each each in this size and then two of each in this size as well so let's go ahead and show you how to do this so we're going to start off by working a slip knot slip your hook inside and we're going to chain 30 one, two. once you've got your 30 chains we're going to chain one more and we're going to now skip the first chain and work and increase in the second chain so slip your hook in the second chain from the hook and work two single crochets in that same stitch like this and we're going to be working 10 increases in a row here's my second increase third increase we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so once you've got your ten increases you should have 20 stitches left and you're going to work one single crochet in all of those 20 stitches last stitch left now we're going to work a single crochet there as well and once you have worked your 20 single crochets, you're going to chain one. And let's go ahead and snip this yarn off. Pull it out of the stitch and pull this down to secure it in place. Now you can curl this and twist the yarn to make this little curl appear at the bottom. So this is one that you're going to be making two in each color. So you should have six of those all together. If you choose to work with just one color, then go ahead and work six. So however many colors you choose to go for, we're going to need six of them all together in this size. Let's move on to the next size. For this, we're going to start off with a slip knot again and chain 30 again. Once you get to 30 chains, you're going to chain three more. That's one, two, three. 
we're going to skip the first three chains that we have just worked and we're going to work our first stitch in the fourth chain from the hook yarn over slip your hook in the fourth chain from your hook yarn over pull up a loop we're going to be working a double crochet in there yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now this chain three is going to be considered as a double crochet as well so now we've got two yarn over go back into that same chain stitch and work two more double crochet you're going to be working four double crochets in each chain stitch and we're going to be working in 20 of them all together once you've worked four double crochets in 20 chain stitches then meet me back here once you worked your four double crochets in 20 chain stitches this is what your tentacle should look like. Now we're going to turn this and twist it a little bit more to help it gain shape. So start from the bottom and start twisting and it should automatically turn into this beautiful curl like this. There we go. And once you've done that, we're going to resume working our stitches and you should be left with 10 chain stitches altogether. And in every single one, you're going to work one double crochet. So, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through first two, and then the next two. And just like this, we're going to work ten double crochets. And once we get to the last stitch, we're going to chain one, and slip this yarn off and pull it out of the stitch there we go now that's another one of the tentacles done again same as before we're going to be making six of these so if you choose to go for three colors like me you will make two of each in this particular format and if you're going for the same color then go ahead and work six of these all together so go ahead, all together you're going to need 12 tentacles, 6 large ones and 6 small ones. Work all of those and then meet me back here. Now onto the eyes and for this we'll be working with black yarn and a 3.5mm crochet hook. So we're using a smaller size this time. So start off by working a slip knot and chain 2. Now if you wish to use security eyes instead of this eye, that's totally fine. You're going to be inserting the eyes between round 14 and 15 with a gap of seven stitches. Now from here, once you've worked your ch two chains, you're going to be skipping the first chain and working six single crochets in the second chain from your hook. It's really difficult to see stitches in black with black yarn, but I will write down the instructions at the bottom of the screen as well for you to refer to. And once you have your six single crochets, you're going to pull on this bit of yarn to eliminate the gap between your stitches. And from here, you're going to work in a spiral. So starting your first single crochet of your next round on top of the first single crochet of your previous round. So from here, you're going to be working six increases all together. So that's my first single crochet going back into that same stitch to work another. That's my first increase now. Second increase. Third increase. And my final one, increase number six. Now after once you've worked your six increases, your stitch count is 12. And we're going to work a slip stitch in the next stitch. Leave a long tail and let's go ahead and snip this yarn off. Pull it out of the stitch and pull this down. 
And there we go, that's one of the eyes complete. You're going to follow the same instructions another time to have another one of these. Now onto the bow for this jellyfish and I've chosen to go for this lovely blue colour as this is the third colour of the tentacles that we have chosen. So, work a slip knot and we're going to start off by chaining 32. Once you have your 30 chains, you're going to chain one more, which is your turning chain. Skip that chain that you've just worked and slip your hook in the second chain from your hook. I'm going to be working single crochet row. So that's my first single crochet. Just like this, we're going to be working a single crochet in every one of these stitches all the way to the end. Go ahead and work that and meet me back here. At the end of this row of single crochets, your stitch count should be 30. Now we're going to chain one. This is our turning chain. Turn your work around and we're going to start working on top of these stitches. Starting the first one in the same stitch as the chain one. Slip your hook in there and work your first single crochet here. And just like this, go ahead and work a single crochet all the way to the end. Now we will be working a total of six rows of single crochet, exactly the same way that we have just done this one. So once you get to the end of this row, you're going to chain one and then turn again and keep working exactly the same way until you have six rows all together of single crochets. So go ahead, work six rows of single crochet and then meet me back here. At the end of six rows of single crochet, this is what the bow should look like. We're now going to chain one and snip this yarn off, leaving a long tail. Pull it out of the stitch, pull this down. And now we're going to make this rectangle into a bow. For this, let's go ahead and thread this bit of yarn into a darning needle. Now we're going to hold the two of these ends together and stitch them all the way across from this end here you're going to make your way through both of these and here we go and once you stitch those two together you're going to pull these apart and now holding them in the center so this part is going to be in the center we're going to slip our needle through the center and make it go through this side and the back at the same time and we're going to go in a zigzag format like this and in through one side out through the other like this and come out so zigzag all the way to the center, pull your needle through and we're now going to pull this down all the way. From here you're going to take the other bit of yarn and give this a little knot in place. Give it a nice and tight knot. And from here, we're going to hold the two bits together and roll it around in the center. Like this. And from here, you're going to use your darning needle, slip your needle through the back of these loops that we've created and create a loop here, pull your, push your needle through and create a knot in place. Let's do this one more time. Down, and this creates your bow. Now onto the assembly, and we're going to be starting off by attaching the eyes onto the head. I've already gone ahead and done one, and I'll show you how to do the next one. Now before you do this, you're going to make sure that the stitch that you finished with is directly at the back, and count 13 rounds down. Your, the eye that you're going to attach is going to be right below round 13. So here's round 13 and this is how it needs to be. Now we will be keeping about six to seven 
stitches gap in between the eyes and the other one is going to go around here so let's go ahead and count one two three four five six seven and i'm going to be keeping a seven um a stitch gap now this this particular bit where we finished i uh, would be keeping that just where i want to draw the lashes so it just makes it nice and easy so keeping that on the side like this matching it on we're going to now stitch the eye on by catching one stitch on the head and one stitch on the eye so one by one we're going to atta attach these two things together And now once you made your way all the way around we are going to be working on making the eyelashes now here we've worked all the way around and we ended up where we started in the corner there so i'm going to be slipping my needle back in the base of this to come out at the edge instead of the center of the eye so once it's right at the edge you're going to be creating three lines like this one on the top one in the middle one on the side to do this you're going to keep two stitches in between and each time guide your needle to come back from where it's coming out from at the moment like this and the third one Keeping it symmetrical, so make sure that it's done exactly the same way on both sides. And oh, that one didn't go in the desired place, so I'm gonna take this out. So this is how you can take it out and reinsert it in your darning needle. And we can continue. And there we go. That's perfect. So once you've drawn the, the three bits of uh, eyelashes, you're going to catch a little bit of black yarn on the eye. Like this. And we're going to be creating a loop. Slip your needle through the loop and pull it down to create a knot in place. This will secure your thread in. And now I can slip my needle back into that same stitch and guide the needle to go through some fibre fill and come out from another side of the head. And now I can go ahead and snip this yarn off. Give it a little squeeze for it to retain its shape. And now the eyes of this jellyfish are on. We're now going to go ahead and embroider a smile onto this jellyfish. And for this, you're going to keep the uh, smile exactly directly in the middle. I'm going to insert my needle through one stitch and guide it to come out from the other side, keeping the width of the smile like this. So from here, I'm going to pull it through all the way and then going back into that same stitch one more time. And this time I'm going to guide my needle to come out from the center, one round down. And keeping this here, pull this through. And now we're going to pull this in and this should create a perfect smile in place. So once you've done that, you're going to slip your needle back into the center where the, the, the needle came out from a second ago. Slip it back in, guide it to come out from this side again. And pull in the middle. And that's it, that's the smile of this jellyfish we're now going to give this bit of yarn a knot in place like this
Now we can use the darning needle and slip your darning needle back into that same stage, guide it to go through some fiber fill and come out from another side of the head. And now we can snip that yarn off, do the same with the other. give it a squeeze so that it retains its shape and there we go the smile is now complete now we're going to quickly uh, use a darning needle to work these ends in take your darning needle and you're going to be working this thread in into these stitches so you're working one strand at a time so you go in on in one direction Take a few stitches, go in from one direction, then come back towards that same direction. And back in the opposite direction again. So you always work in threes when you're working the uh, ends in. So the third time I'm going to go back in the opposite direction. So use a few of the different stitches, pull it through. And there we go, the thread is worked in. Now I can go ahead and snip it off. And do the same with the other one as well and then meet me back here. Now work the ends in, let's move on to the tentacles. And for this, let's grab hold of all of the tentacles and we're going to be attaching that to fourth round. So one, two, three, four, this round here, we're going to be attaching the big curls. So these ones, in round four so all six of them I would say alternate the colors each time so let's show you how to attach that you're going to need a crochet hook and a darning needle for this one two three four so anywhere you like you are going to isolate so slip your hook in one side and isolate one stitch like this now you're going to loop this bit so you should have two strands coming out from the top of the tentacle so loop one of them onto the hook and pull it through that stitch and now i'm going to give this a little knot using the other bit of thread that we've got coming out from the tentacle and give it a double knot or triple knot however you want to do this so once you've done your knots you're going to either there are two ways of getting rid of these threads. Either use a darning needle and slip it back into that same stitch and guide it to come out from the other side using uh, and making it go through um, some fiber fill. Or you can use your hook and slip it from a few stitches away and guide it to come out from that same stitch. Hook it onto this, uh, loop it onto this hook again like this and pull it through. So it's entirely up to you how you wish to do this. So that's the one way of doing it. I'll show you another way. I personally prefer this way because you end up uh, making the thread go through some fiber fill and it stays in there forever. So slip your needle back into that same stitch and guide it to go through some fiber fill and come up from another side of the face or anywhere really. So. coming up from here pull it out and now I can go ahead and snip this yarn off and that's one tentacle attached so as I have three different colors I'm going to be alternating three the colors um, one by one let's go ahead and attach this one more time and show you how to do it so you're going to slip your hook so one two three one two three four so isolate one stitch by slipping your hook from one side and taking it out from the other grab the tentacle and loop this onto your hook and pull it through now we're going to go ahead and give this a little knot in place i always give it a double knot so it's nice and secure 
And now you can go ahead and use a darning needle or a crochet hook to work these ends in. So I'm going to show you the darning needle method again. Slip your ends into a darning needle, slip it back into that same stitch, guide it to go through some fibre fill, come out from another side of the face and go ahead and snip this off. And just like this, work the other end in and attach six tentacles around round four and meet me back here. I've now attached the big tentacles on. We are going to move on to the little ones and we're going to be using the big tentacles as guidance to find out where we're going to position this. Now, as you can see, the blue ones are in the opposite direction, opposite to each other. We're going to be inserting these little tentacles in the opposite place to the blue ones. So one here and one on the other side. And there we go, that's where we're going to attach them. And to attach these, you're going to move these curls out of the way and you're going to leave one round in between and attach it in the space after that. So here's where we attach these tentacles, big ones. So I'm gonna leave this round and isolate a stitch in between these two big curls and isolate a stitch like this loop the thread onto the hook and pull it through and we're going to now give these two bits of yarn a knot in place And using a darning needle, we can get rid of these ends again, just the same way as we have done with all the others. And that attaches one of the little blue tentacles. So the other one, as we said, will go in between or the opposite side of this blue tentacle. Once we've done that, you're going to do and follow the same instructions with the other two as well. But I will show you where they should go. So purple ones are here. So the other purple ones will go between the pink and blue here and other pink and blue here. So go ahead and attach them and then meet me back here. Tentacles are now on. Moving on to the last and final detail and that is the bow on this little jellyfish. So we're going to grab the bow that we made and thread this bit of yarn into the darning needle and we're going to position this um, the bow so that the edge of this bow is right at the center of the head. So right at the center and find out where this part meets the head and this is just where we're going to attach the head and the bow together. So as my thread is coming out from the back I'm going to turn it this way and we're going to isolate that stitch with the needle and we're going to just secure this in place like this. Now we can go through the bow once through the bow and once through the head a few times and repeat the same process a few times so the connection is nice and secure and it's not going to move anywhere. So. I've gone through the same stitch a few times and I feel the connection is nice and secure. I'm going to go back into the same stitch. This time I'm going to turn it the right way around and we're going to make sure that it is positioned in the correct place and it stays upright. Now we're going to insert it back in that same stitch and guide it to come out from the back and now this is where we're going to secure it, secure the thread in. So go on to the blue bit, isolate one stitch or a thread like this and create a loop in place. So here's my loop, I'm going to slip the needle through the loop and pull this down. This is going to create a knot in place, we're going to do that same thing one more time in that same place. Slip your needle through and there we go. Now once that's done you're going to slip your needle back into that same stitch, guide it to go through some fibre fill, come out from another side, come out through the eye, that's totally fine. 
and I'm going to snip this yarn here and there give this a little squeeze and now the bow is attached to bow is now on we are now going to move on to the last and final detail and that is adding a little bit of white onto this really dark and black eye so we're going to, let me zoom out a little bit for you guys there we go and i'm going to show you how to crochet or create this part on here as well so first of all thread your darning needle with white yarn you're going to slip your needle around one of the stitches like this it's really hard to see with the black yarn but this is how you're going to isolate one stitch and just around there you're going to yes and do it here we are going to make the thread come out still leaving this bit here we're going back into that same stitch and we're going to create this effect by going through that same stitch three times all together that's one each time making the thread sit side by side here's my second and the third and final one there you go so once you've done it three times, making it sit side by side again, once you've done it three times, we're going to take these two ends, we're going to tie a knot together. Like this. A double knot is ideal. And there we go. Now that finishes this big round part and now we're going to create that tiny little part up or in the corner up here. So keeping it symmetrical on both sides. Now to get rid of this knot from here you're going to slip your needle back into that seam stitch and guide it to come out from a um, similar place on the other eye, not right here. So I'm going to pull this in and that will get rid of the knot. So now from here, we're going to use the darning needle to slip this white thread back inside the eye and make it come out from here. Slip your needle, guide it to come out from that same place like this. Slip it from this side, come out from that side. Now I can thread this bit into my darning needle. As this is quite a small thread, I've inserted the needle first before I can pull this out. There we go. Now once you've done this, you're going to use the other darning needle and you're going to make that little mark here. To do this, you're going to isolate just one little stitch, go through it once and that's it. Now we are going to catch this thread here and I can go ahead and work a knot in place with the other bit of yarn. And once we've done this, we're going to do the same thing as the other side as well, other white dot. Slip your needle back into that same stitch. Guide your darning needle to go through some fiber fill and come out from another side of the face. It can be from anywhere. Pull this in all the way. And we can now go ahead and snip this yarn off. Let's go ahead and do the same with the other one as well. Slip it back into that same stitch. Go through some fibre fill. Come out from another side of the head. And there we have it. That's finished. Now that finishes our jellyfish. If you enjoyed making this jellyfish with me, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.